I'm here with Paul and we're going to talk about Cthulhu hack. So there's so many Cthulhu games out there. What's, yes. what, tell me about yours. So there are a lot of Cthulhu games out there, but I think there's a niche for everybody. And Cthulhu hack is a simple game designed for, if anything, for speed of getting up and running. You can create At a- last. Indeed. So the, the, the rule book is very slim. I compare it to the fact that 7th edition, which is fantastic, has a chase chapter, which is the same size as my whole rule book. So, um, and the idea is you can create characters in five minutes and just get on with playing the game. So that if somebody dies or goes insane, it doesn't take long for them to get back on board to play again. Because that is the thing, like Cthulhu, I always consider it like it's a one-shot game usually. I mean, you can do a campaign, but it's kind of like the one-shot thing, your character should go mad yes. or, or die. Yeah, and, and my view on that, which I cover in one of my books, The Haunter of the Dark, is that the campaign should be about the threat to the world, not about the characters that are trying to beat it. In, in Lovecraft stories, there are so many times when there's a letter from a, a distant uncle or a, a journal that's found. That's the way to create your campaign. Have the characters leave behind evidence of what they've discovered so that the next group can pick it up. So then you're not tied to just one character over the course of the campaign. You can deal with the threat with many different characters. Okay, so this is the, the easy and the quick version of yeah. horror role-playing. Yes. Um, but there's more to it than just the book now, isn't it? You've, got, you've done a load of other books for yes, us. Yes, absolutely. So From Unformed Realms deals with creating new horrors. It's a set of uh, random tables that allow you to create new horrors or change existing ones. Can we, can we show yep. which book's which here? Yeah, absolutely. So that's From Unformed Realms. Um, and as I said, it's random tables, which allows you to change uh, your horrors. Um, there is uh, The Haunter of the Dark, which was nominated for an Ennie in 2017, um, which is about taking Lovecraft stories and actually using them as the basis for your adventures. So it actually takes the Haunter of the Dark story, but it's annot annotated. So you can see where you would find clues if you were actually a character in the story itself. And then it includes a sequel to that story so you can pick up where that story left off and carry on trying to defeat the horror. Awesome. There's this art, this, I didn't want to spoil this by actually having a title on this. This is a set of three adventures called The Three Faces of the Wendigo. But the, the, the picture was so nice, I didn't want to put a title on it, which is, leads to some confusion. But this is uh, three adventures about the Wendigo spirit. So like wilderness and cannibalism and so forth, which is an interesting topic to deal with in gaming. But um, they're all by, that's three separate authors. Each, we keep, each came up with different ideas. Um, and I'm following a similar idea at the moment. I've got three authors uh, creating adventures based around Shubnigarath, which is about mutation and creation. And those three authors hopefully will have the adventures ready for the new year. Uh, hasn't got a title for the book yet, um, but um, the authors are working very hard on getting those adventures completed. So that should be out soon. Um, okay. And then the adventures themselves come in, like I have box sets that basically have all the books in them. So, like, when did the, the moment of inspiration strike for you that you wanted to, to do horror but simple? The inspiration I have to give to David Black, uh, who is an author who came up with a game called The Black Hack, which basically takes fantasy games, the, the old school game, and takes that uh, and simplifies it in a similar way. Uh, and and there was a, there's a mechanic in that game called the usage die, which basically means that you don't have to track resources. And I thought, yeah, exactly. You roll a one or two and it goes down. And I thought that would be perfect for sanity. And from there, I built the game around that idea of using that mechanic for both sanity and investigation. Because in Lovecraft stories, you take an example of the Haunter of the Dark. At the beginning, you've got uh, somebody who doesn't understand the, the world of the mythos and they're you know, energetic and interested. By the end of it, they're broken and ultimately they are killed presumably by the horror. And that's what I wanted from that mechanic and it works perfectly as a way of handling how the character gets more and more desperate and broken as the adventure goes on. I can see how that would, would work, that's a great idea. So as, a, as an author, you, would you say you're more author or more game designer? I call myself a freelance 
maybe game designer is how I have it on my business card. So I do, I do freelance writing for other companies. So I've written for Pelgrim Press, uh, for Yarnring and who do Simbarum and other companies. But at the same time, I, I want to develop my own. I, I like to take ideas and develop them further. So an example would be uh, Maelstrom for uh, Arian Games. I was really into the idea of developing some of the careers because the game has a very simple, simple concepts. And I actually made an entire book about beggars and how they functioned in the Elizabethan society. I quite, I like to take little parts of games and develop them into, into, into more. So I'm not sure whether there's a proper title for that sort of, but a tinkerer, a game tinkerer maybe, I don't know. But when, when did that start? Were you like, like three years old and you're looking at your board game and going, I, I, I can see these components, I want to play somehow differently? I think, I think that's probably the case, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's probably kicked off more in the last 20 years, um, but I do like to do that. I mean, an example, with, there's a game called Hollow Point, which is supposed to be a kick-ass action type thing about mercenaries, and I turned it into something called Hobbit Point, which basically allows you to play Lord of the Rings with exactly the same rules because I could see there was part of the game that just fitted that, that alternate setting. Um, and I think maybe that's what I like to do. I like to bend and stretch ideas to see whether I can make them work for something else. That's awesome. So if somebody wants to pick up the Cthulhu hack, what yep. do they do? Where do they go to? So they either go to justcrunch.com, which is it's my, my publishing for my games, or they go to allrolledup.co.uk, which is my wife's company. She makes dice bags and dice trays, uh, but also she deals with my, my physical published books. Um, and, and so they're all available through, through that site. Okay, thank you very much for okay. talking to us today. Good to talk to you, Becca. Hi, um, I'm Paul Wardowski of Just Crunch Games, um, and I, I ask you to, uh, to help support the butterfly project and uh, the the charity um, and to dig deep um, as it's uh, vitally important that um, all children of the world have the opportunity for a, a complete uh, education so i ask you to support the project as as i have